Games rated E to T. Welcome to Nintendo Power Podcast. This episode is 100% Mario as we discuss Super Mario 3D All-Stars, revisit the original Super Mario Brothers for its 35th anniversary, and loads more. My name is Chris Slate, and joining me today are three longtime members of Nintendo Treehouse. Nate Bildorf, hi Nate. Hey there. Reiko Nanomia, hi Reiko. Hi Chris. And Tim O'Leary, hi Tim. Hi Chris. Now, for many years, you've all played Super Mario games, worked on them, and just basically lived and breathed Mario, so I couldn't be more excited to talk to you about the cool Super Mario stuff coming our way. And I want to start with Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which I think should be out the same day that we post this episode. And we were all able to play the game a little early, and I've been having a blast revisiting Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy on Nintendo Switch in HD. And I did talk to each of you a little bit before we started recording, and um, out of this collection, I think we each have a fav- different favorite game. So, Nate, let's start with you. Which game in this collection is your favorite? Uh, I mean, it was. I'm sure this answer is the same for everyone. It was not easy, because uh, I love all three of them. But um, Super Mario 64 is definitely... Uh, has a very special place in my heart just because it seemed like a, um, a pivotal time, um, for video games. It was a pivotal time in, in my life. Um, but I, I really, I know that there were games that were 3d before that, but it's the first game that really registered for me, um, to be a truly, uh, explorable 3d world. And, um, I don't know that to even replaying it now, I get the same sort of feeling of freedom. The second I pop out of the pipe the first time, uh, in that little area with trees, it's just, uh, is a moment that I have never forgotten, and the rest of the game, of course, is uh, just as superlative. So that one, that one rose to the top for me. Yeah, that was uh, that was one of the most impactful games I think I've ever played. Just the first time I saw it, and and the first time I saw it was really amazing because I was working for a game magazine at the time, and I got to fly to I think it was called the Space World event, uh, where the game was revealed alongside the N- Nintendo sixty four in Japan. Oh wow! It was the first time I'd ever left the country. I was still a really young guy, and I managed to find my way uh, to the to the right place. And um, when I first saw the game running, I just uh, nothing had prepared me for it. And the idea of going from a side-scrolling game to something where it felt like you were in the world was just mind-blowing to me. And um, you know, but when I got back, I tried to explain to everybody else on the team like what this was like because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the internet back then. You couldn't just pop on and watch a video. And it wasn't until I think the following. Uh, would have been E3 or, or CES at that point, where they finally got to see it for themselves, and then they finally understood what this crazy man had been talking about, <laughs> you know, every day since. Um, and I found that when I went back and played the game in this collection, um, it was still there. There was a nostalgia for it, obviously, but so much of it came back to me because I hadn't played a lot of those levels in the game for so long that I just kind of basically didn't stop playing until within a day or two I'd, I'd beaten the game again for the first time in probably 20 years. <laughs> And, uh, but it felt great too with the sharper graphics and, you know, even now being able to feel some rumble in the controller, it was, um, it, it felt a little bit fresh, but also really took me back. Yep. And, uh, I imagine Reiko and Tim for you as well, that, that game probably was a pretty big moment, you know, when you first played it. Yeah, it definitely was for me. I was actually living in Japan when N64 came out. Um, and I, in I, full disclosure, I had purchased a different gaming system, uh, and then my uh, buddy of mine brought over his N64 with this, and I immediately had buyer's remorse. Uh, but um, yeah, it was, as you, as Nate described, it was really magical. And I actually didn't go back and play the game until much later. I think I didn't actually play through N64, through Super Mario 64, excuse me, until we actually wrapped up work on Super Mario Sunshine. And then I went back and, and played the game for the first time uh, and... I could see the the connective tissues between the two titles, and it's it's great. And then you can also see that with as we're going to talk about Super Mario Galaxy later too. But you can definitely see the progression as we move through it. Mm-hmm. It's really really interesting for me to hear uh, Chris and Tim talk about um, their experience with uh, Super Mario sixty four and when and where they played it because <laughs> this game actually came out the year that I moved to Japan. 
Um, so we might have been on the same flight, Chris. I don't know. But <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's it was an interesting time for me. Just, you know, new experience, new country, just trying to get my bearings. Um, but I didn't have the financial means to purchase a system myself, but a friend of mine did. And I just remember going over to her house and, uh, you know, spending many, many hours playing uh, Super Mario 64. And um, I actually never finished it because, you know, life and stuff. But um, I have gone back and and played it again. And it just brings back a flood of memories for me. And, and you know, the same is true of, of a lot of our, our games. Um, you know, it they all kind of mark a certain period in our lives and, and the music and all of those things just bring all of those things back for me. So a uh, huge soft spot for Super Mario 64. Absolutely. And, um, and Rekha, we'll stay with you. What out of this collection, which game is your favorite? My favorite was, it was really, really hard uh, for me. Uh, Cause you know, I, I, started working in the treehouse in uh, 2002, but it wasn't until Super Mario Galaxy. That was the first Mario game that I actually got to get my hands really dirty on. Um, I wasn't leading the project, however, so um, I got when you're leading a project, it's it's a little different from, you know, someone who's supporting uh, that group of people who's at the center of everything. Um, I feel like, you know, you know, everyone wants to lead, you know, the the new big title but I think as someone who supports it you can kind of just enjoy it you know what I mean <laughs> so mm -hmm. I got to do that as well but when we first got our hands on that early build everyone was obsessed and you know we were all kind of playing around with running around these different planets and the gravity and you know the physics and all of the things that that you know in the in the past we thought we thought they had done it but we just realized that you know, they had just scratched the surface. And with Gal with Super Mario Galaxy, it was really, really evident that, you know, the sandbox had, had changed. There was a new dimension to it. So um, just really great to kind of experience it from, you know, someone who's close to development, but not actually in development. So, you know, there's a whole lot of work that goes into um, creating these games, even before we in localization get our hands on. But to kind of be part of that process was really super cool for me. Yeah, I remember when I first saw that game, just the idea of combining Mario with space just seemed like such a cool thing that, uh, you know, it seemed weird to me at the time that once you saw it, that that had never happened before. It's like, of course, that would be a perfect place for a Mario adventure. And um, the combination of kind of classic 3D Mario, uh, you know, um, controls and features, but, but now with this added ability of going on the planets, and uh, and just the way the different way you progress through those levels um, was a really cool kind of fresh experience. And and one thing that I appreciated being able to play it uh, again now as part of this collection is not just the the, the higher resolution, but um, I like my favorite way to play a lot of games on Nintendo Switch is with the Pro Controller. And uh, I wasn't sure exactly how that would work before I played it in terms of being able to collect the star bits and move around your cursor on the screen and the ability to do that by tilting the Pro Controller, of course you can use the Joy-Con as well, it was still very, very seamless and worked really well for me. So I was, I was really happy to kind of play it that way. It kind of gave it a little bit of a fresh feel. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy that we were able to um, uh, find a way to make it playable in handheld mode and with a Pro Controller. But I gotta say, replaying Super Mario Galaxy in this collection with the Joy-Cons split and, and reliving my Wii days where I would just totally sprawl out on the couch and just be completely lounged out with my hands in different directions and then point at the screen and do a little of this to collect some star bits. Man, I, I really miss that era. <laughs> the split, I mean, the, the, uh, the Wii remote, um, you know, with the nunchuck attached to it, uh, I had a lot of good times with that controller and being able to, I don't play as many games now on the switch, even though of course you, you can functionally do that with many of them, but, um, this is the first time that I really sort of reveled in uh, the freedom that that afforded. And so I'm, I'm a, absolutely playing all the way through that game with split Joy-Cons on my couch. Like, there's no way I'm doing anything different. Nate, I remember you discovered you could throw yourself around a planet and just kind of keep that momentum going. Oh <laughs> and the woos that we heard <laughs> throughout, <laughs> like resonating throughout the whole <laughs> space. <laughs> yeah, everyone was like, what is happening over there? It was, yeah, good time, good time. Gravity was so much fun to play around with in that game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that, that well, I mean, it's same is true for Super Mario Sunshine, but for all these games and really for Mario games in general, 
you know that they're going to be fun when just dinking around on the first level and and feeling the movement is mm-hmm. is fun in and of itself. You're not even doing anything. I mean, in Super Mario 64, when you pop out of the pipe, you're just jumping on trees. You're you know you're running around outside on the castle grounds because it felt good to run around. And in Galaxy, it felt good to just do those long jumps and see if you could get all the way around one of those tiny little biscuit shaped planets. I mean, that's how you just knew that the entire experience was going to be incredible. Um, that's what Mario games. They, they really, they always seem to nail that, and that's why that they're all pretty much eternal. That's true, yeah. I especially love the long jump in any game that has it. <laughs> but going, even going back to the original Super Mario Brothers, we'll talk about this more in a bit, but I, I noticed that there's a certain momentum to the way he moves. So they're always um, just, just kind of interacting with the world in a lot of these games is just fun. You just want to touch it and pick it up and, and kind of you know hop around and, and yahoo you know, and grab a <laughs> bunch of trees or whatever. And... Uh, and, and then on top of that, oh, there's an actual game to play through, which is almost feels like icing on the cake at that point. So, Tim, that just leaves one game. I guess it's not too hard to guess which one is your favorite in the collection. And it, and it works out perfectly because uh, Super Mario Sunshine, uh, I think I'm going to you know echo the, the sentiment that both Reiko and Nate expressed, holds a really special place for me. It was my first... Um, big Mario title that I got to work on. I started in Nintendo in 99 and joined localization in 2000. So it was, you know, just right there waiting for me. And I was lucky enough to be uh, one of the translators on that title. Um, Man, from the first moment when you're flying in uh, to Isle Delfino and that cutscene where you just get to watch all those vibrant colors and you hear that music that is specially, you know, that's just so perfect for that locale. And I mean, Super Mario Sunshine, there's so many reasons to love it, but starting with the locale, right? It is unique in that all of the action occurs in one place, Mm -hmm. right? Isle Delfino has one climate. (laughs) It's a tropical paradise. I mean, from like the peak of Mount Corona to the the sparkling sands of Gelato Beach. I'm I'm sorry, travel brochure. But, um, you know, assuming that Toadsworth made the travel arrangements, he deserves a raise because that place is Mm -hmm. perfect. Um, and working through that title with the rest of the crew and with the development team um, just really made me so happy to be part of Nintendo. And I was so excited to get that game done because I wanted my friends and my family to play it, uh, as well as my own kids to play it. Um, yeah, it, for all the right reasons, it really uh, it has a special place for me. I was really especially happy to see that game come back because we really haven't had any opportunity to play it since the Nintendo GameCube. And and now to see it in HD and in widescreen for the first time, even the cutscenes I was noticing are are sharper and nicer than I would have expected. So it, it really puts a fresh kind of uh, coat of paint on it. And um, and it's the perfect way to go back and, and re-experience that game. And it is such a unique installment because of the flood water pack and all the abilities with that. And I, I love all of that, but one of the things that um, that I really remember the most fondly and I'm enjoying again about that game is when they take Flood away and you have to go through those special challenge areas with just your kind of platforming skills. Those are great. No, are I, I agree. <laughs> they yeah. are really hard. But for like me, and it's a hallmark of all the Mario games, it, the game has to feel natural, it has to be smooth, and it has to be fun. And as Nate just mentioned earlier, like when I first landed on Isle Delfino and I picked up Flood, I spent so much time just bouncing around, wall jumping, and switching over to the to the hover mode. Um, when you're coming into Bianco Hills for the first time, and I know that I think all of you will, will recognize what I'm talking about, slide you squirt water down the hill, slide down on your belly, collect the coins. At the bottom, you jump up without stopping, hit that first tightrope, jump up off to the next tightrope. Go way up in the air. Use the hover nozzle, the hover nozzle to to glide over to the top of a building. That is representative of like the pure joy of all the combos that you can put together. And then you're rewarded, of course, with being able to see the the entire landscape. And you can see Petey Piranha, who makes his debut in this game, by the way, uh, mm-hmm. all the way down at the other end. It's it's yeah, it's remarkable. Yeah, and I think you nailed it too. I mean, my favorite levels in Mario games have always been the ones that were just. Uh, you know, a, a blue sky and, and a green landscape kind of stretched out before you. And it's just like you're you're having fun playing outside. And this is a whole game of that. So it was right up my alley uh, when, it, when it first came out. So those are the three games. Um, 
I've personally got sucked more into uh, Super Mario 64 so far, but I've actually played a good amount of the other two as well, and I can't wait to, to just go through them all. Out of all those three games, I mean, I'm sure this is a tough question, so this is kind of unfair for me to ask, but what are some of the, maybe the top kind of moment from any of those games that just jumps out to you that, that you just really fondly remember? Sure. Where to begin, know, man? That's like, there's a lot to pick there's from. There's so many. <laughs> I think um I mean one I'm going to I'm going to go from from my favorite game uh the 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 first encounter with uh with Bowser in Super Mario 64 sticks out quite a bit for me um mm-hmm. obviously because you know in previous iterations you're you know in, in 2D games we're sort of running running past him and grabbing an axe or you know there's there's not a lot of actual sort of grappling going on with Bowser but the entire lead up to those um engagements where you're doing some pretty complex 3d platforming on levels that don't look really like anything else in that game you know they're sort of slightly isometric in the sense that they're not you know big broad arenas you're instead doing platforming challenges all the way up and then actually getting in an arena with bowser and being able to to grab his tail and swing him around and throw him onto mines i don't know that it was just it, it was it had already been compounding to that point that I just was in a, a 3D world that I'd never experienced before. But those battles just showed me what, you know, really what the future could look like when it comes to to interactions. So that really sticks out for me. Tim? <laughs> Boy, well, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll stick with uh, Super Mario Sunshine. And then I think probably for me, it's really uh, the Phantom Manta boss battle mm. on Serena Beach. Um and again, it goes back to the music is, is, is pitch perfect, but also I love the, the aesthetic. You'd been seeing a lot of brown gloop paint, but when Phantom Manta comes out, it's this bright teal with these big yellow splotches, and it looks like an electrified ocean, and it just matched that boss perfectly. And, at, at, you know, I don't, it's a tropical beach. It's a Phantom Manta you, you're, you're squirting water at it and it's breaking up into all these different little pieces. And then finally it gets down to the smallest ones and they're like homing missiles. And there's just wave after wave of those small phantom mantas coming at you. And um, you're putting together all the move sets that you can using the hover, the hover nozzle and squirting water. And man, just trying to survive until you can, you know, bring the Hotel Delfino back out of the goop. And it's a really satisfying moment. I just remember sitting back after that boss battle and just like, you know, like wiping the sweat off my brow <laughs> and, and having to take a break. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a memorable moment from that game. All right, Reka, are you going to stick with uh, your favorite game for your favorite moment? You know, I could say a lot about um, Super Mario Galaxy. You know, I mentioned the gravity earlier and also just, you know, the kind of ways that the development team played with that um, and the aha moments and, you know, just the with every new planet, there is, you know, kind of this new um, trick that they threw in there just to just to keep you on your toes. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think this isn't a battle or anything, but the first time I became a bee <laughs> and hearing that bee sound, I was, I, I, that was pure joy for me. It, it just was, you know, it, it brought its own special quality. Like the, the movement of the bee is so cute. The little fuzz on its, its behind is so cute. And then, you know, you go over and then there's the, the queen bee and you have to help her, you know, collect the little star bits off of her fur. Just so adorable. So many layers. And there's like, I think there's seven power-ups like that in the game. Just, you know, again, so many surprises, so much good stuff to be discovered um, if you haven't played it before. And even if you have, um, I'm realizing as I'm playing through, I forgot a lot of this stuff. And just being able mm-hmm. to relive that again has been fantastic. Um, um, but I also have to say that playing Super Mario Sunshine right now and the c- circumstance that we're all living in, I'm like, can we just all pack up and go to Isle Delfino, please? <laughs> I just, I, I, I'm like, yes, I'll go get fruit for you because I can smell that pineapple as I'm running it back to your basket and like tossing it in there. <laughs> that sounds good to me. I want to be on that plane. <laughs> I really want them to do like a follow-up as you're flying in. If you notice there's Isle Delfino, of course, is shaped like a dolphin, but you know, there's the sea turtle Island off mm-hmm. to the side yeah. in that opening movie. I want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. I'll take just about any Island at this point. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I also wanted to touch on some of the other cool uh, recent Super Mario announcements. Um, just to, to kind of remind people really quick, of course, Super Mario All-Stars, the original Super NES game, 
with the uh, collection of 2D Super Mario games is out now uh, for Nintendo Switch Online members. This includes Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers The Lost Level, Super Mario Brothers 2, and Super Mario Brothers 3, kind of enhanced with 16-bit graphics. I love that game back on the Super NES, and even when they re-released it for Wii, so I was very happy to see that come out for Nintendo Switch. And then on October 1st, we have Super Mario Bros. 35, which, uh, you know, fans of Tetris 99 will kind of recognize this style of 35-player uh, competitive um, Super Mario Bros. action. Then we have on October 16th, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Of course, this is the uh, kind of the remote control cars that, that work with the Nintendo Switch, where you're actually kind of racing Mario Kart for real, in a way, in your, in your living room. Um, and that's, uh, you can get that with either the Mario set or the Luigi set. And then Game & Watch Super Mario Brothers on Nintendo 13th, I, sorry, no, November 13th. I would have never imagined uh, that we'd be getting a new Game & Watch that would actually be in color <laughs> with, a, with a more modern D-pad that you can charge instead of having to put the old watch batteries into um, that lets you play Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels and even a kind of new Mario version of Game & Watch Ball. And then, you know, if it's Game & Watch, so it's got the digital clock with 35 animations and fun cameos and all that good stuff. And then, last but not least, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury coming out on February 12th, which I, Super Mario 3D World is one of my favorite Super Mario games. It's, it's probably my son's favorite, and we played a lot of it together. And the idea that I'm going to get to play that again on Nintendo Switch, and then with this new Bowser's Fury content, which I'm desperate to learn more about, um, I couldn't be more excited for that. So obviously, you know, that's a lot of great stuff right there. Um, and... Um, Tim, I'll just go back to you again. Out of all that, I mean, I'm sure you're, you're probably excited for a lot of it, but is there anything that jumps out to you personally that you just can't wait to get your hands on? Oh, my gosh. That is uh, a very difficult question. Uh, all of it. <laughs> Every last <laughs> bit. Um, maybe um, the Mario Kart uh, live home circuit. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm stuck at home, <laughs> like everyone else, and I'm mm -hmm. already designing courses you know, through my kitchen, underneath my dining room table, uh, I'm I'm really excited for all the uh, the AR in there, um, and to see exactly how those carts will hold up, and if my neighbors will scream and yell at me when they hear them racing. Around <laughs> <it>. <laughs> well, that's awesome, and and Tim, since you uh, you already took that one, uh, I'll ask Nate: is is there another one of these that uh, really pops off to you? Oh, I, I'm with you in. Um in that I, I really am excited to play through um, Super Mario 3D World again. Um, not obvious, of course, for the, the new content, um, which we're all really, really excited to, uh, to experience, but, but really just to revisit the original game, you know, I think both that and Super Mario 3D Land for me um, are sort of special in, in the Super Mario universe, just because, um, you know, they're isometric. And I, I have a really, really fond spot in my heart for that particular type of 3D gameplay. Um, I think it's probably because I, I played with a lot of, you know, action figures and cars when I was a kid. And that's all about, you know, you playing, you making a, a little world, you know, you're navigating a small world with a small character. And the, the video game version of that really is Super Mario 3D World. It's a largely fixed perspective and you're just on a giant playground with an incredibly, incredibly acrobatic character, no matter who you're playing with, um, and just doing doing what you do. Um, I mean, it gets even better when you play multiplayer, but even single player, romping through that world and just you know trying to chain together moves, trying to do ridiculous jumps, even if they're mm -hmm. utter failures. Uh, the increased mobility um, of you know the the cat power up is <laughs> like I mean you just. It, it just turns everything into a playground, um, and so I'm I'm really excited to play through that uh, again as well. When it came out, there's so much content in that game. If you mm -hmm. play through it with every character and try to get all the stamps and everything like that, I mean, there's there's so much that I binged on it when it came out, and then I really didn't revisit it um, for uh, you know except in sort of drips and drabs uh, afterwards. So I'm really really excited to just do that entire game again, um, and then dive into Bowser's Fury. It's uh, I couldn't be more excited. Yeah, there's so much for a completionist to do in that game. And it also, obviously, you can just play it and, 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 and kind of beat it and stop there. But if you really want to get every level and, you know, get every golden flagpole and, and beat every stage with every character, then you can sink quite a bit of time into it. And I actually did that back on <laughs> Wii U with the original version. And uh, that final level, the final world of, of, of oh, challenges... Man 
is some of the hardest, <laughs> maybe the hardest stuff I've ever tried to do in a, in a Super Mario game. Yep. So, you know, it's it really scales up. You can kind of enjoy it multiplayer with, with you know, your, your family. And then if you really want to go hardcore into it and prove your, your skills, um, that's that's definitely a good challenge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you can play online multiplayer now, too, with the game. So that's another great way to enjoy it uh, with up to four people. Yeah. So, Reiko, anything else on this list that there, you're just dying to get your hands on? You know, there, there's a lot. Um, I go back and play Super Mario Brothers, at least the original, at least once a year. Go back to the mm-hmm. roots and play. And I will pull my kids into that one because it's, you know, it proves to have like different challenges because the physics are different you know um and so i i love that frustration in their face when they play it. <laughs> i consider it a small win um i also am looking forward to playing super mario brothers 2 because that was one of that's one of my favorites and you know mm-hmm. the music and just play, being able to play as the different characters and and honestly you know like birdo debuted um, in Super Mario Brothers 2, and I have a huge soft spot for Birdo, but being able to hoist those eggs and then throw them at her, and, mm-hmm. you know, that little, like, buck sound that she makes, like a, like a chicken, <laughs> it just, like, tickles this funny part of my brain that, like, you know, really takes me back. Um, but um, looking forward to, I'll have to clean up some space on my desk here, um, but the the Game & Watch system, um, mm-hmm. I'm absolutely going to create a little space for that, because... Uh, grew up playing Game & Watch, and it's a neat little system, and, and you know, there's cool little tricks for people to discover. Um, and then, uh, sorry, I've got a lot. Uh, <laughs> Super <laughs> Mario Brothers 35 is one that I probably won't be playing with my kids in the room, because uh, those competitive games, that Tetris really does, brings out the worst in me. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. Um, you know, like, when uh, the team working on Super Mario uh, 35 actually one of them brought up a good point. Um, When people play, like when you play the original Super Mario Brothers, a lot of people, you know, you speed run it, people try to get, you know, it's about efficiency, you've got your warps and all that other stuff. Super Mario Brothers 35 turns that thinking on its ear. Like you have to be really, you know, you approach the game completely differently. The stages may look similar, but you know, you have to, I think, economize your enemies or something is, is a, there's someone used a really great phrase for it. That wasn't it. I'm butchering it. But like, mm-hmm. you basically take, you know, and every enemy you defeat suddenly becomes a weapon for you, right? And then mm-hmm. you're sending these to the other players. And it just really challenges the way you approach that world and, and that environment. So I'm really looking forward to playing it myself and um, seeing what other people do with it as well. Same here. Uh, Tetris 99 has become the game that I kind of just sit down and I'll be like listening to podcasts or music and just kind of playing game after game of Tetris 99 just as a way to unwind. And I think I've probably spent close to like 300 hours on that game. So I'm basically just going to disappear from Earth when uh, Super Mario Bros. 35 comes out. How in the world does that make you unwind? I know. I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like hands get sweaty. Like, <laughs> You know what? I turn the music all the way off so I can hear my podcast or whatever. And then... Uh, <laughs> and then I'm not, I'm not super paying. I'm almost not even caring if I win or lose. I'm just doing it, just for the fun of doing it. And then if I, I get a high placement, it's just like a, a nice bonus. So I'm gonna try not to stress out too much on Super Mario Brothers 35 either. Although I imagine it'll be pretty intense. Well, cool. That's a lot of great stuff. And we could talk about. I mean, I could talk about Mario just by myself endlessly. Um, but we're gonna move on now to Players Pulse. <laughs> Um, this is, uh, the section where we go on Twitter and we, um, put a few silly questions out there for people to respond to. And, uh, and this time they were all, um, themed around Mario in honor of the, uh, 35th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers. So the first question is when Bowser's not around, which final boss do you prefer to battle? And the choices were Tatanga from Super Mario Land, Wario from Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, or Wart from Super Mario Brothers 2. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, who do you think won the popular vote here? Tatanga, Wario, or Wart? My heart says Wart. My brain says Wario. Just for the name recognition. Yeah. But yep. Wart is my choice. No, I, think I, think, that's, I think that's all of us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think that's, that's, Wart is definitely where my heart is as well. But you're right. Wario was the clear winner at, uh, at 71.5%. Um, but still decent showings for the other ones too. They were pretty even between Tatanga and Wart. All right, the next question was, which is usually your favorite style of Super Mario game? 
uh, 2D or 3D? And I was very curious to see what the response was here. Obviously, we only gave them one choice. We said you have to pick your favorite style. So it was a little unfair, a little cruel. But um, Reiko, you personally, do you have a preference, 2D or 3D, if you had to pick? If I had to pick? Uh -huh. ha had to pick. Yeah, I mean, they're both great, obviously. Yeah, um, I would probably say 2D. 2D, okay. Tim, yeah. how about you? Uh, I'm going to say 3D. Okay. Uh -oh. Nate, are you the tiebreaker? Uh, yeah, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm in the 2D camp as well. I would, I'd be very interested to see the, the age breakdown, too, for those respondents, because I have a feeling that um, probably it, it is weighted a little bit more towards us older guard, like in the, you know, the games that we grew up with. In terms I'm the of, oldest guy in the room. Yeah, I, I know, 3D. I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Youngest you know what part. I mean. I mean, I love you 3D as well. I just, I would, yeah. uh, I would anticipate that, um, that, you know, some of us who grew up in that era, some of the younger kids who, you know, you, you know, grew up in the 3D era, it might have a little bit more fondness there. But um, for me, yeah, I'm, I'm with Reiko. My, my heart is always sort of on, on 2D. It was a simpler yeah. time, you know? I think, you, I think you kind of go back to your roots a lot of times. But, uh, but I, was, I was surprised. 3D was the runaway winner Whoa. at uh, over 77%. The world and, uh, moves on. You know, not a scientific poll here, but uh, very interesting results nonetheless. Oh. And the final question we asked was, okay, enemies are coming. Quick, pick a flower. And their choices were boomerang flower, fire flower, ice flower, or super ball flower. Anyone want to take a guess as to uh, which of those was the, the top choice? I'm going to say what my favorite is. It's the ice flower. You can walk on water, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty sas satisfying to it freeze really a Koopa is. Troopa. Oh, yeah. And then you can throw it. Yeah. Great. But hordes yeah, of enemies? I don't know. That's like... I'm all, all fire flower. Well, Tim, uh, the people were with you. Uh, I think <laughs> Fire Flower perhaps being the, uh, the oldest and uh, most used uh, flower in the choices here. Uh, just over half of uh, everyone voted for Fire Flower. And you uh, can throw fireballs underwater. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> That's pretty useful. <laughs> Why did I never Especially if you've got that? some bloopers around. But Ice Flower, Reiko Ice Flower was the second uh, yeah, okay, leading I'll vote take there. it. I'll take it. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to move on to Nintendo Power Game Club. <laughs> And, of course, this is where we talk about a game that we all chose to play beforehand, kind of like a book club. And this time, I'm very excited to discuss the original Super Mario Brothers during its 35th anniversary month. Um, obviously, this started the Super Mario series way back in 1985 and kind of refined action games uh, at that time. And um, maybe we should just start with kind of our first experiences. Nate, what, what, was, if you, you know, what was it like the first time you played Super Mario Brothers? Well, that was, I mean... Really, that that began my modern understanding of what video games were. We had we had an old prior to, to us getting a super uh, or prior to us getting a Nintendo Entertainment System, um, we had an, an Atari Twenty Six Hundred and had just a couple of games for it. But uh, I really feel like my um, my true love of video games began by playing Super Mario Brothers. And back then, I still don't understand how I found the information that I did about all the tricks in that game, um, like how to get to the negative world. You know, it must have been in a magazine, but I, you know, I, I cannot remember, uh, you know, how I got that info or was it like a kid on the schoolyard who told me how to do it? But, you know, the way that you had to break those two bricks and then, you know, jump up vertically and then pull over, you know, so that you would, you'd violate through the, through the bricks and then eventually get into the wall. You know, that's like, I mean, nowadays, obviously, you'd pull up a YouTube video and you probably could replicate it in about two seconds because you know exactly how to do it. But back then, it was oral tradition, practically, that it was getting passed down. And somehow we still got it, you know, and, and that was only mm -hmm. one of a million. I mean, the, the infinite one-ups trick, you know, uh, all that stuff, it was just sort of all-consuming. It was, I remember as a kid, just when I wasn't playing, it was what I was thinking about. Because, of course, mm -hmm. my parents didn't let me play all the time. I had a, a, a finite number of minutes per day that I was actually allowed to interact with this machine. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, what can I say? It was transformative. It, it set me on not only uh, the path to basically the art form that gives me the most pleasure um, in my lifetime, but also my professional career. So I, I can't really understate the impact that that particular game had on my life. <laughs> It was the same for me. Like I had played games like most kids before playing Super Mario Brothers, but uh, it was Christmas of 1986, I think, when I finally got my NES, and I had gotten um, 
I'd mainly bought it because I loved games like Kung Fu and Excite Bike at the arcade. And so I got those for Christmas with my NES, but, uh, and I'd never heard of Super Mario Brothers, but it came with the system, so I gave it a try, and by the end of the night, that's all I was playing. And that is the game, like you said, Nate, that turned me from just a kid who liked games into, into a gamer, where that was my main hobby. Um, so it, was, it made a huge impression on me. And, um, and going back and playing it again now, anytime I go back and play it, it takes me right back to Christmas 1986, you know, when I was, I think, 12 years old. And, and just the magic of discovering all that stuff for the first time, you know, not just for the Mario series, but for video games in general, so much of what was in that game you couldn't have predicted. So when you went to the schoolyard and kids were saying stuff, some of it, you know, was bogus, right? But you didn't know, like, you know, uh, the, well, the warp zone trick worked, so maybe this other crazy thing is in there. You just... The rules hadn't been written yet, so it was it was such a great, fun sense of wonder I had playing that game, and and that that still comes back when I play it today. Rico, what was it like for you the first time you you tried the game? The first time I tried the game, um, I just I have an older sister, and the two of us would just take turns. Um, but she's a little bit older than me, um, so she didn't have the resources that I did. Um, mm -hmm. Like she, she was older and I don't think when she went to school, they were talking about video games necessarily, but my crowd certainly was. So, you know, Nate's talking about, he didn't know where he got that information. I remember ex like very clearly busting out my graph paper that, you know, was bought for the purpose of math, but drawing out, you know, like, so there's blocks here and then you have to jump over this one, break this one, and then you have to hit this block right here, but you can't hit this one because then you won't be able to reach this other thing, you know, and just, you know, I, it started new friendships for me, you know, there was like suddenly, you know, a lot, everyone was playing Super Mario Brothers um, in, in school. And so, you know, I was able to create new friendships and, you know, people were going over to each other's houses and showing, you know, each other tips and, you know, tips and tricks. And it was like a whole community built around this game and friendships were created around this game. And so, yeah, it was, it was just an amazing, amazing influence on my life. And, you know, it's, it's great to see my kids also enjoying it as well. Mm -hmm. Tim, how about you? Uh, my experience mirrors, you know, exactly what Nate and Reiko and you, uh, Chris, had just mentioned. Uh, I, as I said earlier, I'm a, I'm a bit older, so I was already in college when this came out. But I was, I had a, an Atari 2600 as a kid with a couple games, and I was, you know, I really like games, but it was just something to do every once in a while. And um, Super Mario Brothers almost got me kicked out of school my freshman year of college. <laughs> my freshman year, my sophomore year. Um, <laughs> Because I didn't have a parent to say, turn it off and go to bed. Um, and we would just, a bunch of us would sit around and old school multiplayer, you played until you lost a life, then you pass the controller around. So there was a ton of smack talking, but also a lot of camaraderie, a lot of high fives, a lot of cheering uh, when you actually cleared uh, a level. And I was definitely the guy that, depending on your play style, you, you either loved or hated because I was hit every brick. I wanted to defeat every enemy, climb, you know, ex explore every pipe. So I was sort of either the trailblazer or sort of the canary in the coal mine. I showed you what not to do because <laughs> I would die so often. Um, but uh, yeah, the friendships that that game created um, and eventually uh, it did allow me to say, see, playing video games, you know, didn't hurt me because now it's what I do for <laughs> my living. <laughs> so lots and lots of great uh, memories of that title. That's great. Well, I wanted to share a few comments that, uh, that people uh, shared with us on Twitter about the game and their experience. This one comes from Matthew. He says, I knew Super Mario Brothers was special when, after visiting my grandparents, I came home to my dad excitedly showing me how he found the warp zone while I was away. <laughs> Everyone loved that game, even my parents. And I remember that was a, a big deal because, um, you know, when I played games before, it was really just me or, or you know, my friends. But uh, with uh, games like Super Mario Brothers, and I remember The Legend of Zelda as well, I had uh, suddenly I would go over to my friend's house and their parents were interested in finding out, you know, where the secrets were. And uh, it really seemed like that these, these kinds of games started broadening, you know, the, the types of people who are playing them. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, this one comes from Juan who says, I consider Super Mario Brothers to be an excellent intro to gaming, especially for children. It teaches the core fundamentals for 2D games. Newer games are more forgiving, but if you learn with more limited tools, you'll do better in the end. I think that's probably true. Yeah, I agree that's completely. That's deep. <laughs> yeah, he's really looking at it from all perspectives here. 
And then lastly, uh, Wesley said, it was released six years before I was born, but I enjoyed playing it with friends on NES from around 1994 to 1998. The theme song will always make my heart skip a beat. And I had to include that one because how can you talk about Super Mario Brothers without talking about the music? Oh, it yeah. is iconic. Mm -hmm. Every title that we've talked about has, I, I would say, oh, that's the best music of all time. And then you mention another mm -hmm. one. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. No, that's the best mm -hmm. music of all time. And it just goes over. The overworld theme, the underground theme, oh my goodness, you'd start a new level and you'd hear the underground theme and you just knew like, oh gosh, I'm going to die so much. Right? <laughs> it, was so, it created so much tense, but it was so participatory, right? It enhanced the emotional play and also and, and the physicalness, you know, physicality of the game. It really, it just was so in, in, integral to the gameplay. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's uh, that's Super Mario Brothers. And again, this is something else I could go on and on about. But um, the good news is it's uh, it's available to anyone who has a Nintendo Switch Online membership. And then, like we said, it's coming with the special Game & Watch Super Mario Brothers. So there's lots of different ways for people to kind of remember the game or play it for the first time kind of here in its, its 35th anniversary. Now we're going to move on to Warp Zone. This is the section where I ask, uh, I usually ask questions, uh, or rather give clues, about games that came out 10, 20, or 30 years ago. But in honor of Super Mario Brothers, uh, this episode, we're going we're gonna to toss all that out. And this time, I'm going to ask three questions, but it's about Super Mario games that could have come out at any time during the past 35 years. So a little trickier, because you don't have much of a frame of reference for, uh, for when these games could have come out. You guys ready? Oh, yeah. Maybe. All right, <laughs> I so, think so. <laughs> So here's the, here's the first game. Let's see. This game added several new twists to classic Super Mario Brothers action, including modes like You vs. Boo, Challenge Mode, and Super Mario Brothers for Super Players, plus Versus Game, which was the first time a Super Mario game included simultaneous multiplayer action. Any guesses? What in the world? <laughs> this game was even compatible with the Game Boy printer. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow, that completely stumped me. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I thought might stump stump a lot of people. Super Mario Brothers Deluxe for the Game Boy Color. Ah, oh, that's right. Wow. The GBC came one. out in May of 1999. A lot of people I think don't know about this one, but yeah, this was the original version of Super Mario Brothers, but with a bunch of new enhancements and new modes that was released for Game Boy Color. Oh man! All right, some of these are tricky. You've now been warned. <laughs> Super Mario. <laughs> that's quite this a warning is... shot. Jeez. I know. Setting the tone. All right, this is game number two. The primary item that you collect in this game comes in a much greater qu uh, quantity than any of the things you collect in other Super Mario games. Also, this is the only Super Mario game to include a VR mode, and it's the only game in the series to ever include Pauline. Any guesses? That should narrow it down a bit. Has Pauline in it. It's a Super Mario game. Man. Wait, and we're not counting like the like peripheral... like. Uh... Like March of the Minis, those games are. We're, we're, we're sticking with the classic core. Yep, this game has Super Mario in, in the, the title. title. Oh. Yep. And maybe don't think back too far. It's got to be Super Mario Odyssey, Odyssey? isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. exactly okay. right. Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> I think that they both knew that. The they were just letting me, they were letting me have that one. They were like, <laughs> All right. I appreciate it, guys. All right, the final game. Uh, another bit of a tricky one. This Super Mario game added a unique art style and had a different lead character with Mario taking a back seat. And it spun off into its own series of games. Any guesses? This was released for the Super NES. The game cartridge used the Super FX2 chip. <laughs> is it, and it, is it uh, Yoshi's Island? That's right. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, as it was called in the US. That's right. Great. All right. Tough. But it's not over yet. There's a bonus audio only question. I'm going to play a sound effect. Let's see if you guys can guess what it is and which Super Mario game it came from. Okay. I'm going to play that one more time. Any guesses? I mean, it felt like Super Mario 64 for me, but... That's just been my theme all day, so it may just be, I may just have it on the brain. <laughs> it is definitely from Super Mario 64. I'll play it one more time and let's see if you guys can guess exactly what the sound is from. I think it's the, it's the entry to the level, right? Because it goes, ba 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 ba, like right after that. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. It's when you hop in a painting and that starts the level. And you're right, you do get that, you get at that tune, well sung. <laughs> Well, great. That's a great finish to Warp Zone. And um, before we go, 
I'm going to take a quick look at some of the Nintendo Switch games that just released are coming soon in a segment we call Game Forecast. Starting on September 3rd, we have Spellbreak from Proletariat, Spinch from Akupara Games, and on September 4th, we have NBA 2K21 from 2K. September 8th, we have RPG Maker MV from NIS America. On September 10th, we had Bacon Switch from Streamline Media Group. On September 17th, we have Hades from Supergiant Games. And on September 18th, today, of course, we have Super Mario 3D All-Stars from Nintendo and WWE 2K Battlegrounds from Take-Two Interactive. On September 24th, we're going to have Going Under from Team 17 and Agro Crab Games. On October 1st, we have Super Mario Bros. 35, which we talked about from Nintendo. And on October 9th, we have FIFA 21 Legacy Edition from Electronic Arts. And finally, on October 30th, we're going to have Pikmin 3 Deluxe from Nintendo. Now, this is, uh, I think there's a lot of stuff here that I'm personally interested in. Um, how about you guys, Nate? Is there anything here that jumps off more than anything else? Uh, de I'm definitely really excited to jump back into to Pikmin 3 um, with Pikmin 3 Deluxe, uh, just because it's been a long time since I experienced that game, and it's a pretty excellent, um, excellent game. Uh, but I also have, I'm really interested in Hades. Uh, yeah. I, I really, I was very late coming to the, the roguelike genre, um, to be honest. You know, before I actually started playing them, I, kind of, I was kind of like, that sounds terrible. I don't want to do that. I don't want to die over and over again. And you know, it's like, I just didn't understand the concept. And then once I actually got into and started playing a couple of those games, I realized just what that, you know, how that pays off over time and how satisfying it is to slowly and incrementally um, build your strength uh, playing through things um, with, you know, a different, with if it's procedurally generated with different experience each time. Uh, so I'm I'm actually really psyched for that. And Supergiant is a really, really talented developer. So um, I, if I had to pick one off the list that wasn't Pikmin 3 Deluxe, it would definitely be that one. Yeah, we spoke to Supergiant about the game on last episode and uh, and heard a lot of great things about it. So that's definitely on my to play list as well. Reiko, how about you? Um, I personally am looking forward to Spinch uh, because mm. I'm a huge Jesse, Jesse Jacobs fan. <laughs> You know, I've I've I watched the trailer and so many rainbows, so many beautiful rainbows. <laughs> I just I think I need rainbows right now. <laughs> um, but uh, another one with a lot of bright colors going under. Um, just the situations mm. look hilarious, um, and I think that'll be just a lot of fun uh, to play. Um, and of course, Pikmin three. Uh, looking forward to playing that again. Um, taking my kid on and bingo battle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Lots of yelling. <laughs> well, those all sound great, Tim. How about you? Any favorites on that list? It's it's interesting. Uh, I can you can see that the three of us work together because I actually wrote down the games that I was like, these are the games that I'm I'm, I'm excited for. Spinch going under Pikmin three. Hey. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so thanks, Reiko. Hey, and sure. for the same reasons, I love the color palette in Spinch um, going under. What a cool concept for a dungeon crawler. Uh, I just thought it looked great. Um, and then, you know, it's not much you can say about Pikmin 3 Deluxe other than it's more Pikmin. Yeah, yeah which is never a bad thing. You can never have too much Pikmin. Yeah. I would just add that I also think RPG Maker MV um, is pretty cool. I've tried it before on the PC, and it's, it's, a, it's a way you can kind of create your own RPGs without coding. You know, create your own stories, your own dialogue, everything. And um, so the Super Mario Maker 2 fan in me is always looking for, for games like that. So I'm excited to try it on, a, on Nintendo Switch. If you make something fun, Chris, send it my way. I'd love to try it. <laughs> Will do. I'll make uh, Nintendo Treehouse Adventures uh, just for you guys. Cool. All right. Well, Nate, Tim, and Reiko, thanks so much for coming on the show. It was a lot of fun talking Mario with you guys. Had a great time. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. This was great. Thank you very much. It was wonderful. That's it for this episode of Nintendo Power Podcast. If you have any comments or questions you'd like us to consider answering on the show, you can email us at nintendopowerpodcast at noa.nintendo.com. Also, we always appreciate it if you can leave a review, and be sure to subscribe so you get new episodes as soon as they're ready. Thanks for listening, and keep playing with power. Power.